But this webinar is going to be parent voices. So we have a bunch of current parents who some are also alum, um, who have children of various ages, both boarding and day students. So they're going to answer some questions. They're gonna talk a little bit about their experiences and what you know you can look forward to at FBS, kind of the questions you should ask, kind of the things you should look out for, um, some advice and you know things of that nature. So sharing their wisdom as parents who some have just been associated for a minute or two with <laughs> FBS, you know, started this year and some have been for many years. So it'll be a nice little mix of people. Uh, just so you know, because I just start talking usually, this is me. So I'm the acting director of enrollment. I'm Alex Winokur. This is my information there. And this is also obviously being recorded. So we will post it as well as send it out. So most of you already have that information. For those of you who are new to Fountain Valley, we have a little bit of both here. Here is what we are. We are a boarding day and international school, co-ed. About 220 students right now, 70% boarding, 30% day students, pulling from over 20 countries and over 20 states. And just for a second, because this is relevant as of right now, I want to talk about our interim program just for a nanosecond. So our interim program is a week to 10 days, depending. And there are all different kinds of excursions, local and throughout the world, that are going on right now. So we, it's a week in March, and then we roll into two weeks of spring break. Um, but you know, right now, we have people in Kauai hiking and going to the uh, waterfalls and camping, learning about ecology. We have people in Spain. We have people in Puerto Rico. We have people in Singapore. Some of them on service trips. Some of them are in immersions. Uh, there's one in Baja. I think they're doing scuba diving. I'm missing a whole bunch. And then the freshmen are at our mountain campus, which is in Buena Vista, which is about two and a half hours from our main campus in South Colorado Springs. And they're in the mountain campus right now, uh, but they started on the Fountain Valley campus, our beautiful 1100 acres, and they went to the top of Pikes Peak on the Cog Railway. They did horseback riding, which some of them had never been on a horse. They did mountain biking, which we found out Two of our freshmen had never ridden a bike before, so that was fun for them to learn how to ride a bike. Uh, they were doing climbing in our ridiculous climbing gym. They were doing trail maintenance, and now they're out at the mountain campus doing hiking things and leadership things and exploring the fabulous dark sky space that we have there. So I kind of wanted to point out that that's what's going on right now at Fountain Valley. Um, but you know what we're really here to talk about and listen to are the parents who have a lot of these students. So some of these students might be related to some of the people on the call. Uh, and this was some of our graduating class from last year. But, you know, part of Fountain Valley is to build up students and to send them off into the world. So really want to hear from the parents here about how exactly we do that at the school. So with that, um, we're going to do kind of a, a round robin of who is here. So just in, you know, a couple sentences, and I'll call on you so I know who's who. If the parents will just kind of say who you are, uh, what grade or grades your children are in, if they're boarding or day, and if you're an alum or you want to share anything like that, that is great too. So I'm just going to start on my screen. So I'm going to start with Mark. We all good? Here you I learned my technical skills at Fountain Valley School. Um, I'll edit that. <laughs> I, my, my name is uh, Mark Sather, and I am an alum. Um, a lot of my family uh, graduated from Fountain Valley School uh, several generations. And then I currently have a junior down there who's having a hard time right now out in Hawaii. I really feel badly for her on interim. Uh, we're getting great pictures of smiling faces. And then our son uh, went to Fountain Valley last year and he's currently at Skidmore College. 
Cool. Great. Thanks. Uh, Allison. Hi there. Um, I am also an alum. I graduated in 99. I was a boarding student when I was a student at Fountain Valley, but my daughter Lily is also a junior and she is a day student. And I also have a daughter who will be an incoming freshman next year. So that's exciting that both of my girls will be there next year. Uh, and my daughter is also away on interim at the moment. She is in Spain learning about the Islamic heritage in the south of Spain. And um, unlike Mark's daughter, she's not communicating very much. She is playing it cool and just sending us like one picture a day, but I know she's in good hands. Uh, there will be a weekly going out tomorrow that will have a whole bunch of pictures in it. So, Karen. Were you hoping for me, Alex? Yes, I was hoping for oh, you. Sorry. you got <laughs> I thought you said Carrie. It's Karen, but yeah. um, I didn't hear you correctly. <laughs> so I'm Karen, and I have a daughter, Amelia, who's a freshman, and she's a day student, and she is also an equestrian. She rode varsity equestrian, and she loves Fountain Valley so much that she has decided she wants to board. We're kind of on the border of, you know, we're pretty far from Fountain, but um, I wasn't sure she's mature enough to board as a freshman, but she's gonna go for it as a sophomore. And she's also an interim with the freshman in Buena Vista. Heidi. Hi, everyone. My name is Heidi Carson. I live in Northern California, and my daughter, Sophia, also is in Spain. Um, we're also in the very infrequent communication club here. I got a few photos of some beautiful uh, buildings, but I'm looking forward to hearing more when Sophia's home next week. Um, obviously, she's a boarding student and interested also in equestrian and has done also uh, theater tech and rock climbing and a lot of really interesting activities that Fountain Valley offers. So happy to talk to folks if they have interest in that. Um, yeah, uh, really excited to be here. I'm not an alum, but uh, very happy to share any information that uh, anybody may have questions for about for me. Great, thanks. And Kurt, you know, you're next. Hi, I'm Kurt Sonderman. Um, we, uh, my wife, uh, Amy Edwards, and I are uh, the parents of Kai, who is a class of 25. He's a junior. He's currently on interim uh, in Puerto Rico. Um, we're, he's in Comunicado, but we kind of sort of expected it because he's in, uh, he's doing the naturalist portion in the uh, El Yunque uh, National Forest, uh, doing trail building and nature uh, studies there. So we'll we'll figure that we'll get the download when he gets back this weekend. Um, we're also the parent of uh, Berg, who was a class of 2023, who's graduated and is now uh, at university in the Pacific Northwest, and the guardian of a lovely young lady who uh, graduated in the class of 2022. So, great, thanks. And last but not least, Jake, who I will let you introduce yourself and then go ahead and start off with the first question round. Hi, hey folks. My name is Jake Morris. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions. I've been here since about August. I'm also the boys lacrosse coach here at Fountain Valley. Um, I'm also an uh, Assistant Dorm Director in North Perry. And yeah, just been, been really busy with getting all of our acceptances in and everything. Super excited to be here. Um, I want to ask this first question to all parents and we can kind of um, round off, but um, the first question is, uh, why did you choose FBS? I can start with that. So uh, I had Amelia and she was at a very, very small middle school, about 20 in her class and she 
wanted to go to a school that was a little bit bigger, but not too big. We toured some public schools and it was pretty terrifying for her. Um, she also wanted to be in a community where she could try new things. Um, I did mention she's a equestrian, but she also just finished up doing the musical and she'd never done anything like that before. <laughs> so I think Fountain Valley has been very accepting and the academics have just been on point. Um, and it's small enough that they can do pretty much anything they want to do. You know, all these conventional sports or equestrian or all of the arts as well. Yeah, I can also <laughs> echo that comment as well about the welcoming community. I think in our case for Sophia, she had gone through a lot. She went from a very close-knit elementary school to kind of this massive local middle school. And then we had the pandemic where she spent a year and a half working from my dining room table, not really interfacing with anybody um, outside of a Zoom call. And uh, her best friend moved away and some other sort of life things happened where I just felt like for high school, I wanted her to just have this really warm and welcoming community. And She'd always been very independent, traveling around the country, like visiting her cousins by herself um, on the East Coast. And so we actually looked at schools all over the country. We traveled to visit several of them and found that Fountain Valley just had this really warm and welcoming vibe that she just really connected with. It was very much her own personal kind of style, just very chill, but very um, academically motivated at the same time. She loved the art barn. That was amazing. We got to see um, on our tour, how um, traditional black and white photos are developed. That was like mind boggling because people these days really only know digital cameras. And so the fact that people are working with film and developing it in-house was like one of the small but amazing things that we witnessed on their campus tour um, that I think kind of just helped sell her about how special this place and the school is. I can go next. Um... I would say there's two big reasons that I was excited for Lily to go to Fountain Valley. I mean, first of all, it was always a wish and a hope and a dream that one of my kids would want to go to my school that I loved so much. So that was a, a dream come true. But more importantly for this kid, um, I she's a smart cookie and she was, I don't think she was being truly challenged in her public school. Um, and so I really wanted her to go to a place where she could be known um, and really the education could be individualized and she could be truly challenged. And that is definitely happening at Fountain Valley. Every year she signs up for stuff that I'm like, it's too much. And then she does it. Um, so I'm really proud of her on that. And then the other thing that I think is so special about Fountain Valley is the relationships with adults. Um, I think we all know that our teenagers are not super excited about listening to the advice of their parents, uh, but I have found, I remember it from my time and I've seen it, that it is definitely still um, happening, that she has really deep relationships with other adults that she really trusts and she's willing to go to for advice and to listen to. And I just think that's really invaluable for young people to have um, trusted adults in their life that they look up to. I, I could add something uh, to that. My wife and I were both looking for a school that would uh, foster, you know, creative thinking and the creative thought process. And um, we we heard through a friend uh through a friend that was uh experiencing fountain valley and that kind of keyed in on what we wanted to uh go explore and and we met a lot of people a lot of teachers we sat in on a couple of classes when we were first thinking about going there and um we were really impressed with the fact that they were they were teaching the kids not the answers but the the process and and how to approach critical thought and and that really resonated with both of us and uh i think we made the right choice because we got uh our our new uh freshman at university um called us and was like 
I've got to go see one of his teachers, Simon Walker. I have to go see Mr. Walker. I have to go see Mr. Walker when I'm home on Christmas break because everything he was teaching me about, you know, arguing cases and doing critical analysis and the critical thought process has put me years ahead of my peers at the university. It's just making all the difference in the world to them. So I think that, it, you know, it really bore out to, to what we had hoped it would do. Uh, I guess I can go next. Um, echoing all of those things. Um, so with our, with our, it was more noticeable with our daughter. Uh, like I said, she's currently a junior and she's a boarder as well. One of the weird uh, living in Colorado Springs, but the child is a boarder uh, deals. Anyway, she was uh, always shy um, and always from, from, early, early youth and just a, just a shy kid. Uh, went to Fountain Valley and the support of the community and the, the friendships that she's built, um, she has blossomed well from shyness. Uh, she's currently an RA, uh, captain of the tent, one of the captains of the tennis team. Um, and so outgoing, it's, it's unbelievable. And she's forged the friendships and I'm sure everybody on this panel can echo it. Um, I touted it. The, the friends that I made at Fountain Valley are the ones I honestly keep in touch with more now, more so than than my college buddies or, or other buddies. It, it was such a bond formed in that community at Fountain Valley. And I see the same thing in, in both of our children. So uh, academics, most certainly. Um, but quite frankly, it's the it's the social skills in the community uh, that that really was the determining factor for us to choose Fountain Valley for, for both of our children. And what kind of, I mean, talking about that, there's all really good stuff. One of the things I'm kind of curious about and we'll kind of see, cause we have both sides of this um, as well as someone who was here, who was a boarder as an alum and now our kids are day students, but kind of what do you see as the difference between like a boarding student and a day student and a boarding school experience and a day school experience? Well, I, I can speak to that really quickly too, just within, within an example. So when our son, who's now a freshman in college, we did one of these types of meetings with his college and the parents, it was, it was very interesting because a lot of the parents were very anxious about how their child son or daughter is going to more or less survive on their own out in the big bad world and coming from fountain valley all their questions from everything down to doing laundry um fountain valley literally is a preparatory school uh our son it was easy transition almost too easy of a transition from from high school to to college and and that's invaluable it is it is a serious leg up so i um uh, i'm the i'm i was a boarder when i was at found valley my family lived in japan when i was a student and um so i was very very far from home um and now lily's a day student and april will be a day student and um i think what is so lovely about that for me and for our family is that my kids have grown up all their lives here in Colorado Springs and they were relatively sheltered. You know, we just, we couldn't afford to take them all over the world and, and show them the whole world, even though we talked about the whole world. And I feel like Fountain Valley is letting her just have this window to the whole world, you know, both by having classmates that are from all over the world um, and from taking classes that have a very worldly perspective. And then of course she's on this international trip right this minute. Um, so yeah, I think for me, um, it's like, it's a very sort of yin yang opposite of what I was experiencing, right? I lived abroad, came back to Fountain Valley because I desperately wanted to be in Colorado um, and loved it. And then for Lily, it is letting her um, just greatly expand her little world from what she grew up with here in Colorado Springs. I don't have too much to add in terms of what it's like to be a boarder, but I know Amelia doesn't ever want to leave Fountain Valley. <laughs> she, her best friend is a 
faculty kit. So she spends many, many weekend nights and many, many weeknights at Fountain Valley. And so she just wants to be there all the time. And um, so she did decide she wants to board there. And uh, I, I think that she hasn't felt, if anyone's worried about the day students being excluded, I don't think that's the case at all. I think that um, they're invited to all the same dinners and events. And um, so she just wants to be there all the time. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I would like to, you know, kind of dovetail to that because um, ours are, our two boys have been day students and um, the one young lady that we were guardians of was a boarding student. Um, but our house on the weekends in a lot of times is kind of sort of like a little mini UN. I mean, we have students from... Uh, you know, Japan and Brazil and Mexico and uh, Switzerland, you, you name it, that are here spending the weekend here. And um, which is exactly, you know, my wife and I both have uh, lived abroad. Um, we have very much have a global perspective. And that was one of the driving things that we really liked about Fountain Valley. Because um, I don't, I would say, fairly safely that most Americans do not have an appreciation for the fact that we have less than 5% of the population of the world. And, and so when you look at, you know, where does our role in the world and where we should be, I think the Fountain Valley gives the kids a pretty good perspective. And I, I don't know, um, Alex can answer this probably, a, you know, much more accurately than I, but the, the number of, you know, uh, countries that are representative ranges from mid 20s to mid 30s uh, based upon the year. And uh, so far it's been just a tremendous experience. And our kids have traveled um, so far, you know, with their classmates, they've spent summers in Japan, uh, Norway, Germany, Switzerland, Italy. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a great experience for that. And yeah, that's it hovers in the mid 20s for the most part with international. Usually we're 20, 25 percent, something like that. Um, and it just depends on year on year. And it's to your point, too, it's everywhere. I mean, we have students from Brazil. We have students from South Africa. We have students from, you know, all over the place, which is definitely a, becomes and makes a very worldly community, which is kind of good. So what was the toughest transition for you all as parents and for your students coming into Fountain Valley? Well, I'll, I'll go. Um, it, it, the fun, there's a very funny story around our family where when our son was a freshman, we brought him down and he did not want to go. Um, our family has a serious fear of change affliction or distaste for change. Anyway, um, we left him on campus and he, driving off campus thinking, oh my God, are we the worst people in the world? And then we promptly didn't hear from him for about two weeks. And I asked him what his favorite experience was at Fountain Valley. And he said, the first two weeks of freshman year, um, which put me on my heels. I, I, I couldn't believe that. It was, it was pretty remarkable. But the school keeps the incoming students busy, um, a lot of community building stuff. Uh, but honest, honestly, um, he turned around 180 degrees and, and, took to it immediately and, and absolutely loved it. And then just real quickly, the other thing we picked up was parents are only as happy as their least happy child. And so we were basket cases in, in the, in the silence, but then we also sort of figured that, um, silence was, was good. It meant that he was having a good time, but it was, it was a good bit of advice, but anyway. 
I had kind of a similar experience dropping my daughter off freshman year. Uh, she was 14 at the time. I left her in this dorm room and her roommate freshman year was from Mexico and the roommate's parents were there. They were all speaking Spanish and another group of kids came along. Everybody was speaking Spanish. My daughter doesn't actually speak Spanish, even though she's in Spain right now. And I walked away because I had to get on the plane to go home. And I thought, oh, I'm leaving her in this room of people I don't know. And nobody speaks English in this room right now, at least. Um, and it was just kind of that funny feeling of like, is this the right, did we make the right decision? And um, I think we really did. I mean, that roommate from freshman year became one of my daughter's best friends and uh, really, really one of the people who helped make that freshman year amazing. And um, it was just so lovely. And now my daughter's going to go to Australia this summer with a, with a, um, a program organized with Mr. Simon Walker, whose name was mentioned earlier. Uh, so yeah, that, that was a little bit, I would say that was a little bit of my hard moment. Is that just like dropping your child and walking away and kind of wondering if it's all going to be great. And then it is. I think everyone is expressing that those first couple weeks can be hard. And my story is around that same time period. Um, Lily, I went into, you would think I would be like, yes, go, because I had such great experience, but I did have trepidation when Lily went on both ends because I was like I love this place so much like Lily please don't mess this up and then also like Fountain Valley I love my kids so much please don't mess this up you know so I just there was a lot of like pressure um and the first like maybe two weeks in Lily came home and and was just in crisis like she had had a wonderful first week and then week two it was like I'm not smart enough like she had the first time where she was like I'm not the smartest kid in the room and I don't like how that feels and in my heart, I was like, yes, this is good, right? She's going to be challenged. She's going to be, um, she's going to rise to the occasion. I knew she could do it. But seeing her in that moment of crisis um, was scary, you know, because she was uncomfortable. And of course, we, you know, we don't want our kids to hurt. Um, but yeah, I think um, she overcame that very quickly. And Fountain Valley has, the magic is still very much alive at Fountain Valley. And Lily has found her place there. So we have, we got over our hesitation very quickly. I don't have much to add other than um, more of the same. The, you want your kids to be successful. You want them to find their people. So that beginning of the year is tough. You bring your kid to a new place where they no, nobody, and um, they they have a massive support system that and uh, brings everyone to their best. Yeah, along those lines, my daughter also really bonded with the room or dorm parent, I should say, from especially I think her freshman year and this year her junior year. Those two women, she feels very very close to and. Um, kind of like those are her her go-to people on campus whenever she has a question or a problem. And it's great that they live right there with her kind of adjacent to the dorm. So that has made the dorm a really comfortable place for her to be. Could we uh, possibly talk a little bit about what the college selection and college prep processes look like for, for everyone? I can start. Um, so we have a new team of college counselors at Fountain Valley this year. And my daughter's a junior, so of course um, I am we're only at the beginning stages of this process, but I've been really impressed with the communication that I'm getting from them very regularly, um, very responsive to questions that I've had. And um, I, what I really like is that there's a big emphasis on fit. It's and a fit from a whole family perspective. So not just fit like, oh, this is what your kid wants most, but like college is a huge investment. And is that, is this place that your kid is interested in a fit for your family financially or, you know, geographically or whatever. So 
I have been pleased with that. I have a slightly unique perspective because my daughter is um, an athlete. She is a serious soccer player and she's very much hoping to play college soccer. And so we're kind of accelerated in the process and we already have a list and she's working it, trying to get people interested in her. So um, so they've been really supportive of that um, and that kind of unique perspective that, you know, hoping to be a recruited athlete brings. And exactly. Springboarding once again off of that, uh, the the new college advisor, I believe, has 20 years of experience. Uh, the school got him from, uh, my details are foggy, but uh, I believe it was another boarding school, either in Tennessee or North Carolina. Uh, but, but the gentleman has 20 years of connections with um, the admissions departments of, of, of top flight uh, schools and universities and higher education, knows how to navigate the scholarship process, whether it's academic or athletic. Uh, we, we really, Fountain Valley School really hit the, uh, hit the ball out of the park with uh, acquiring this guy and in um, personal experience, our daughter's a junior as well. And, and she's come home with a packet with different tiers, reach schools, the, the whole shooting match. And um, quite frankly, a lot of parents spend a lot of money on external uh, college application experts, if you will. And some of them are great and some of them are less than, but uh, Fountain Valley School has a, uh, a truly exceptional college placement uh, advisor. So does anybody want to talk a little bit about how you've seen your student grow over the years? Now, some people only have freshmen, but some people have had you know, have juniors and seniors, and some people have had people graduate from the school. So I'd really like to hear about just kind of like how you saw them as people, as academics, start their time at Fountain Valley, and then kind of where you saw their arc was by the time that they graduated and they were going off to college. I guess I'll go first because I have the freshmen. <laughs> And I'm the one who hasn't had much time, but I just can't believe how much my daughter has grown as a leader. I, she came home, you know, one of the first couple of weeks and said she was running for her class president and she'd never done any leadership before in middle school. And so I was like, good for you, honey, you know, going out of your comfort zone don't be disappointed, you know, if it doesn't work out for you. <laughs> I had no, I did not think she would win, but she actually is the freshman co-president. And, um, you know, just the confidence that the leadership brings her. Uh, she has ridden horses for a long time, but was selected to ride varsity and that, automatically elevated her to a leadership position on the equestrian team as well. And so it's just it's just amazing seeing my little introvert kind of come out of her shell and soar. So it's been great. Well, I don't have a graduate quite yet, but I feel like this week of interim is starting to give me the preview of what life will be like when she's away. And it's a little sad, it's quiet. Um, but the ways that I have seen her grow, I would say two things. First off, um, I would say that her empathy has grown a lot. I mean, she is kind of a black and white thinker and um, she was chosen by her peers to be on the honor council, which is some which is like the peer judicial board when a student um, breaks a school rule. Their information is heard by their peers and then a recommendation is made to the administration. Uh, and I just feel like that has been a huge opportunity for her to have to break out of that black and white thinking and recognize all the nuances that go into, um, you know, good and bad decisions that her peers make. And the other thing I will say about her is that 
Um, she has come out since she's been at Fountain Valley. She's, I am a proud LGBTQ plus parent. And I just feel like she is so multidimensional and that is just one part of who she is, but she gets to be a leader, an athlete, a scholar. And I just were, I think that if she had gone to other schools that might have been all she was known for. And I feel like at Fountain Valley, she just, that gets to be just one piece of what she is. And she is just very multidimensional. And I mean, like so many stories we've heard, like she was in middle school during COVID and she spent those years doing her schoolwork either in her bedroom or like playing video games. That was how she socialized. And so to see her blossom and just become this person who has so many interests and facets of her personality has been a delight. Yeah, I think for Sophia, I've seen a lot more ability to interact with adults in general. I think uh, my son went through the public high school and that was great, but most of the adults he had worked with were his teachers. And so, but in Fountain Valley, I feel like there's this circle of adults around every one of the students, whether it's their dorm parent, like I mentioned, my daughter's good relationships with her dorm parents or the sports instructors or the activity uh, instructors or her advisor, who she also has a good relationship with, or the administration, or really, um, I think the adults for her are just sort of another piece of the whole picture. And just in the same way that she feels comfortable interacting with all of her colleagues, classmates, dorm roommates, um, she has a circle of adults that are her support as well. And, and I, I think that is a really great um, way for her to just con con to continue to build her self-advocacy skills. I just have to quick add on to that and say, I'm a college instructor and it is so big when your students are willing and able to come and talk to you and advocate for themselves. And I feel like Fountain Valley students are really being trained to do that. So love to see that. <laughs> I, I echo that exactly. So um, blossoming, I've heard that word a few times and I say it, uh, our child was, she was shy, she was kind of timid. Um, quite honestly, the kind of person a uh, youngster that couldn't really even open, uh, make an order at a restaurant, couldn't speak to the waitress, and then goes to goes to Fountain Valley, and her self confidence um, is immeasurable. Uh, and I saw that with both of our children. Um, and then going back on Allison's thing, uh, we went out for Parents Weekend out at our son's college and met with one of his teachers. And so this has got nothing to do with what our son was saying. The teacher was commenting on him. Yeah, our son goes to the teacher if he needs help. And they learn that at Fountain Valley. Um, a lot of these kids, you know, they just, they don't ask for extra help. They don't ask for a little guidance and, and suffer as a result. But at Fountain Valley, it is so readily available and so encouraged that it becomes borderline muscle memory. The, uh, the Fountain Valley student asks for help, and that's the most important word and the powerful word in the uh, in the language. Uh, it, it's a, it's extraordinary. Yeah, I, you know, and I have to agree with pretty much what everyone said. You know, with the we have one in college now, and and um, or actually two, and um, you know, advocating for themselves is a big deal. Um, and I don't think that happens a lot in, uh, I, I'm not trying to, you know, differentiate between a public school education or a private school or any of this other stuff. But in most of the schools, advocacy for themselves is not something that is routinely encouraged. Um, and you don't see it very often. And um, I, I would say all of them have become very, very good at advocating for themselves. Um, so much so that, you know, when we went out uh, to the university, the professor there was like, 
um, you know, they have a feedback at the end of the semester and he goes, I, I don't need to give you feedback. I've been giving you feedback for, you know, continuously for a couple of hours every single day for the entire time because he is there helping in the classroom. They're doing stuff in the lab. They're doing that kind of work. And, and, and it really differentiated in, you know, the end product when, you know, as to how he advocates for himself once he graduated from Fountain Valley. And the younger one, um, he, when he struggles, he comes home, he vents, because um, kids seem to save their worst behavior for their parents, um, and vents on us. And, you know, we have to realize, you know, cotton ball, cotton ball, it's not personal. And um, eventually gathers himself, figures out what he's going to do, goes in, you know, the next morning and goes to see whoever the teacher is and says, okay, I need to, you know, be able to do X, Y, and Z to understand this better. And I need help in these areas. And so I, I would say that that is uh, a, a really good skill that they develop. What advice would you all give to an incoming family? Uh, once again, it's it's the same thing. Um, with our son, uh, we were worried worried like crazy, and he was having the best time of his life. So. Altogether, um, more or less, give give your child the reins. Um, they're safe at Fountain Valley. They will enjoy themselves at Fountain Valley. And just because I'm a basket case because I haven't heard from the kid in two weeks, um, that that's on me. Uh, just just let them have their fun. Let them make their friends, and they will. Um, and and simply enjoy it. it it'll work out fine <laughs> i was gonna say something similar you know as much as you can hands off which is hard hard for me anyway um i would say my other piece of advice is when you are um wishing you knew more about what was happening with your child to reach out to your child's advisor so fountain valley has an advisor program every student has an advisor I kind of think of it like that's your school parent, right? That's the person that is really looking out for your kid and advocating for your kid um, and knows your kid and knows what's going on with them. And so reaching out to that person to check in, you know, say, oh, how's my kiddo, you know, or, um, or when you have questions or whatever, just leaning on that advisor program because I think that's a, a really nice resource at Fountain Valley. Yeah, the 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 advisor email and advisor um, phone number is definitely a valuable resource because you can back channel some things. Um, you have to trust the kids; they're going to explore um, where they want to go in life. I mean, yeah, I'd, I might be accused of trying to push in certain directions or things like that but the reality is is they're going to become their own human beings and um it's a healthy relationship to be able to allow them to grow and explore and and just trust the process and trust your kid and if there are some things that you know you in the back of your brain that you want to do it the advisor is the person to reach to and they will very it's not a very for, a lot of their stuff is not formal it's an informal relationship and they can get that message through or they can quell your own concerns <laughs> so i know this is a little bit more granular than like the bigger, you know, what advice, but from a logistics standpoint, because, you know, choosing a school and coming to school is a big deal. From a logistics standpoint, what did you wish you knew beforehand 
that you found out like during the process in the first week, in the first couple of weeks, in the first year, two years, something like that. Kind of what was that thought of like, oh, I wish I would have known that. And it could be literally anything from, you know, as small as things to pack to bigger pieces of how to prepare adequately. One thing that I really like about Fountain Valley and especially compared to some of the other schools we were considering is just the proximity to Colorado Springs, the proximity to the airport. Um, I think somebody when we visited the school pointed out that there's a, I don't know if this is still true anymore, but there was a giant Air Amazon warehouse next to the campus. And they said, if you order something on Amazon, it'll show up like the next day. Um, my daughter has not had any problems sourcing things she needs. So we didn't feel this need to pack like a million things when she arrived. Um, just kind of get the basics and then sort of figure out what you need while you're on the ground there. If you run out of shampoo, it's not the end of the world. There'll be a bus to Target over the weekend. You can go get more then. Um, there are just, it's very, the whole school is just very easy in that way. It's very easy to get to and from the airport to the local Colorado Springs airport. Um, and for getting home or when she goes from here back to school, it's very easy to get back to school from the airport. So um, all of that has made life really, really, really easy for us. Maybe I'll chime in as a day student parent that um, I was a little panicky about like, do I have to sign up for the bus? Do I have to sign up for lunch? You know, things that I'm accustomed to worrying about. And uh, it's like, you're all in at Fountain Valley, buses included, meals are included. Um, so just get that schedule and show up and she can ride the bus. And um, that was really great because it just felt like, oh yeah, it's taken care of, you know, I could just worry about my kids sort of emotional well-being, like feeding her. She was so hungry when she came home <laughs> her first couple of weeks, but um, yeah, there wasn't actually a lot to worry about. Going into the day student thing as well. So our daughter's a boarder and our son was a boarder. Um, our daughter's, I think three three of her best friends are day students. Um, and same with our son and, and quite frankly, same for me. So there's a bond between the boarders and the day students in a lot of cases where your, your child may be going and eating a, a home-cooked meal um, more regularly than you think. Um, so uh, there's a lot of give and take in that community as well. Uh, so they're, they're not just stuck on campus. They, they, they've got opportunities to leave campus, go get whatever they need. And um, in our case, we've had a bunch of kids come to our house. And I was about to say, they, they can come and leech at our house is what, what a lot of them ended up doing. Talk about buying food, holy moly. But it's, it's all together, it's a great fostering community. Yeah, as a local person, we live in Manitou Springs, which is right up against the uh, the mountains. So we're we're a little bit to the to the west from uh, Colorado Springs and Fountain Valley, but uh, a lot of the students come here. Costco memberships work out really great because um, during the weekdays, um, we're finding out you know that Fountain Valley covers logistically three of the five meals that these boys eat a day. Um, but on the weekends and when all their friends come on over, um, there's a there's a lot of cooking that goes on in the house. And uh, we've had a group of Chinese students in here. We've had, you know, uh, cooking classes with all the other students learning how to use a wok and you name it. And it, it's just it's it's a good environment. But uh, uh, there is a little bit of a difference between the day students and the boarding student because we've had both. The day students days are longer. Um, and I, I just, we just have to recognize, you know, for our perspective that, cause they spend eh, maybe 45 minutes on the bus to get to school and then 45 minutes to come back from school. And so, you know, that adds to it. Whereas a boarding student, you know, it has the, 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 uh, nice, uh, aspect of being able just to walk to their room and they're home. Uh, so, you know, it's, there is that little bit. I'll maybe just add on to that a little bit to say like it is human nature to think that the grass is always greener right so 
for the first two weeks, day students really wish there were boarders and maybe the other way around, some boarders were wishing they were day students. And then my daughter, for her perspective, she was like, oh, you know what? I realized like I liked to be able to come home um, and, you know, get a little mom love or whatever. Mom rub my shoulders. Uh, but but she was a little jealous those first few weeks, like, man, they're like they're doing fun stuff every night. So I think um, there's a little bit of that to to sort of prepare for those first few weeks and say, like, you know what? you can, you are totally welcome to spend the night in the dorm on Friday night, if that sounds fun to you, or vice versa. Like, if you are seeing a friend that is looking a little homesick, like, invite them over this weekend. Um, so just knowing that, like, the grass is always greener perspective will kind of settle out. <laughs> so <clears throat> the busing is great. I don't know who the audience is today in terms of day versus boarding, but just it the bus is included in your tuition and you can pick up or drop off at any of the stops, which is different from many of the private schools in the area, um, which is great. You know, one of the bus stops is close to my work. One of them is close to my house. So that's been great. That was something I didn't even know about. That was an added bonus. <laughs> and then the food, I think, is also an added bonus. If my daughter has to stay late for a group, then she can eat there and get snacks there and that as well as all included. And I was not aware of that, Alex, when I signed her up, but that was really a pleasant surprise. Yeah, and we have, so kind of related to what y'all are talking to too with logistics, we have one day question and one boarding question. So the one day question is how does it work? And it came up when you were talking about it. How does it work when a day student wants to stay overnight and how many times can they stay overnight? I don't actually know the number of nights they can stay, but it feels infinite to me. <laughs> I think if they have an event the next day, correct me if I'm wrong, that's like a free pass. Like it's automatically approved. Like if there's a ski trip in the morning or an early horse show or something. Um, but there is, I think a set number. Like I said, I my daughter spends a lot of nights there. I don't even know the tally, but... There's, they seem to get approved. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. And when she spends the night, it's in the dorm. The day students do get assigned to a dorm, which has been great. Because if she has to bring a project or something, she has somewhere to put it um, during the day, storing things. Um, so she spends the night in a dorm, I think on a cot, or maybe she sleeps on a couch or on the floor. I'm not even really sure. But then she also has a friend who's a faculty kid. So she spends nights at the faculty uh, home on campus. I'll just add to that, that logistically, um, the school uses an app called Reach. Um, and that is how you would your kiddo would apply to or whatever, ask for permission to stay the night um, on campus. And so what that means is like, there's some accountability, right? Like somebody knows they're coming, it's been approved. They have to follow the same rules as the dorm in terms of checking in at check-in time when it's time to be in the dorm. Um, and I, I have never encountered a limit on the number of nights a kiddo can stay. So I think we're good there. <laughs> Maybe Alice can answer if there is a limit, but again, I've never found it. Uh, yeah. yeah, technically there's a limit, but <laughs> I think it's until I say, hmm, you're starting to look more like a boarding student every day. I think that's what the limit is. <laughs> you should pay for that. <laughs> uh, related to the same question, what size sheets are they? Are they twin XL bed sheets? Yeah, okay. 
I, yes. I didn't know <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the I think um, right around like August, September, every store, every big box store will have twin XL sheets in abundance. So the, I think that's the size you need. See, and now I learned something too. So now when we're on tours, Jake and I can give those questions. Um, anything else from the panel here that you would like to share before we, we wrap it up here? Just uh, if you're if you're considering a boarding student uh, situation, just that same program reach allows the parents to you know allow their their child to go to a local family house with a with a day student for the weekend or over spring break or whatever the situation we we get reach requests all the time for you know boarding students to come spend the weekend at our place or to go with us skiing on the weekends etc yeah and it's just to make sure that the parents are fully involved and that nobody gets a surprise and it's like well, where's so and so? Um, so they they do go, a really great job of accountability for all the kids. I just want to plug one thing, which is that I know we've um, we gave the advice of oh, hands off and trust the process. Um, but also, I want to say that there is absolutely a place for parents at Fountain Valley. So I am a parent ambassador for my students' class. Um, and we have that there are ambassadors from every class and we find a handful of ways to volunteer at the school and to have our voices be heard. So um, I just want parents to know on the one hand, yes, it is like a complete, very well-rounded program. On the other hand, um, you will always be your kiddo's parent and you will know them best and advocate for them best. And there will always be a place for you at Fountain Valley um, to both, you know, get get your elbow grease in there if you want to help out a little bit but also have your voice heard great yeah thanks and, and to allison's point i actually just had a phone call yesterday um, with an incoming parent of a ninth grader who wants to get involved and she was asking exactly that exactly what is it because she's you know currently at a day school and was like, how does this work in boarding school world? So it's perfect. And I'm going to have her get in touch with you. <laughs> so thanks, everybody. Thanks to the panelists. Thanks to all the attendees, um, both on camera and off attendees, and both on camera and off panelists. So we really appreciate your time. And you know, as always, you can feel, reach, feel free to reach out to admissions. You can reach out to me, Jake, admissions in general. And we can always get you in touch with any of these parents and more. We're always happy to make the connections parent to parent, student to students. Um, so you can get those questions kind of answered and, and talk sort of on that level where you know it's not just admissions telling you things. It's always good to hear it from people. So thanks so much. Appreciate it. Enjoy the remainder of your evening. And we will see you around campus sometime soon.